what they want, even if you have already given that exact thing to the to the people. Hello friends, Steve Dangle here, and we have another trade tree for you. Now, for the first couple of years that we did trade trees, one of the most highly requested trade trees that there was, especially from Montreal Canadiens fans, was the Craig Reve trade tree. And I mean, the proof is in the pudding. That video is at like, what, 180,000 views? And it's one of those huge trade trees that is so big that it has other trade trees in it that could be there their own trade tree video. For this round of trade trees, we're like, all right, what do you want? And we put it out there into the universe and so many people said, give us the Max Pacioretty one! Especially after Vegas traded Pacioretty to uh, Car Carolina for, um, I guess you'll have to watch the rest of the video to find out because the Max Pacioretty side of the Max Pacioretty trade tree is done with an asterisk. Also, the Craig Reve trade tree video is 19 minutes long. This one, it's a little snack for you. So without further delay, here is the Max Pacioretty trade tree between the Montreal Canadiens and the Vegas Golden Knights. <laughs> Now, let's go back in time. Because it's amazing what a few years can do to a reputation. The Vegas Golden Knights, in their first season, were a bunch of scrappy, no-quit cast-offs who proved everybody wrong and that every GM in the NHL were a bunch of doo-doo heads. Because this team full of fourth and fifth line players ended up being pretty good. Like, for example, recently people were talking about how the Seattle Kraken fleeced the Columbus Blue Jackets in the Oliver Bjorkstrand trade, but this is actually a long-standing tradition of expansion teams fleecing the Blue Jackets. Remember William Carlson? The Blue Jackets do. That dude could barely crack the lineup and then he goes to Vegas and is a 40-goal scorer immediately. And, of course, Vegas in their first season made the Stanley Cup final and were within three wins three of the Stanley Cup. Now their reputation was a bunch of scrappy overachievers. They were one of the best stories in the sport, bar none. People forget that. And now they have a reputation for treating everyone like garbage. Perhaps not everyone. They do have a handful of original Golden Knights, William Carlson, Jonathan Marcheseau, Riley Smith, but they have gone out and got big name after big name after big name. We're gonna get Alex Petrangelo and Mark Stone and Jack Eichel. Oh no, we don't have any cap space. All right, we're gonna trade getting to Donna. What do you mean we can't trade him to the Ducks? We're gonna trade Marc-Andre Fleury for nothing, which isn't true. Marc-Andre Fleury wasn't traded for nothing. He was traded for a person, but name that person. Go ahead. Go ahead, any of you. Off the top of your head, without looking it up. You'll know if you're, if you cheated, and that's good enough. You don't know. You don't know who he was traded for. Exactly. My bet is if you walked up to Vegas GM Kelly McCrimmon himself and said, who's the guy you got in return for Marc-Andre Fleury? He wouldn't be able to tell you. And you know what? Actually, let me look. Because now it's bugging me. Mikhail Hakarainen. I believe you. NHL.com. Is that a good source? Anyway, the reason I tell you all that is because there was a time where it was rare for Vegas to go out and get big name players. They thought they got a big name player heading into the 2017 Stanley Cup playoffs when they traded a first, a second, and a third for Thomas Tatar, and that's not even the trade tree that we're doing today. Although, that's, you know, now that now that I think of it, we probably should at some point. Spoiler alert, Detroit won, but Vegas decided they didn't like that toy and decided to trade him for a much brighter, shinier toy. The toy that was a captain at his respective toy store, Max Pacioretty. Now, there was a little bit of uh, tumult with the Montreal Canadiens for quite some time, and Mark Bergevin, and he shipped out P.K. Subban, and then a little time passed, and you know what? We're gonna ship out Max Pacioretty too. All moves that were highly criticized, and for good reason. And then the Montreal Canadiens went on to make the 2021 Stanley Cup Final with a lot of the pieces that they got in this trade, so what do we know? But Montreal was in a bit of a bind, because they actually did try to trade Max Pacioretty, who needed a new contract as well, and he supposedly, as the story goes, said no. This was with Vegas Golden Knights' divisional rival, the LA Kings. So because Montreal is in this precarious decision where they have a player who they want to trade and can't seem to do it, Vegas should be getting good value here. They super do not. The trade was going to the Vegas Golden Knights, Max Pacioretty, and going to the Montreal Canadiens, three parts, Thomas Tatar, Nick Suzuki, and a second round pick in 2019. Now folks, you're not gonna believe this. Thomas Tatar was a really offensively solid NHL player for 
four consecutive seasons before Detroit traded him to Vegas where he just wasn't used. He did have a bit of a setback season with Detroit, just 28 points in 62 games, but that's still almost half a point a game. Well, he goes to Vegas and in 20 regular season games, he had just four goals and two assists again because he was barely used. In the playoffs, just one goal and one assist in eight games because he was barely used. But then hilariously, Tatar, who again, solid NHLer for years and years before that trade with Vegas. He goes to Montreal, even though he's supposed to be a cap dump, and he has the two best years of his career. <laughs> he goes to Montreal and in his first season there, he sets a new career high with 58 points in 80 games. Only to be top next year when he got 61 points in just 68 games. Why only 68 games? Was he hurt? Ah, no, alas. COVID. That thing that sort of turned everything on its head. And it stopped the best season of Thomas Tatar's career right in its tracks. When the Habs come back for the bubble, the team is great. They certainly overachieve as the 24th seed. They knock off the Pittsburgh Penguins in the qualifying round. But in 10 Stanley Cup playoff games, Tatar just two points. The following season, Tatar has another decent points per game pace. 10 goals, 20 assists, 30 points in 50 games but used very sparingly in the playoffs, just the one point in five games. That's because there was a lot of criticism and a lack of trust with his defensive game. All that being said, the fact remains, the Montreal Canadiens went all the way to the Stanley Cup final, and just like the Vegas Golden Knights with Thomas Tatar years before, fall three games short of the Stanley Cup. Tatar would walk to free agency where he would sign with the New Jersey Devils, but 149 points in 198 games with the Montreal Canadiens. Really, really good for a dude who was supposed to just be in the trade to make the money work, basically. And then there's Nick Suzuki, which which I, I can't get past. Because in 2017, Vegas had three first round picks. They fleeced them, they fleeced everybody. They're famous for fleecing everybody. And in 2017, they had the sixth the 13th and the 15th overall picks. That is ridiculous. That should be something that you build the future around. Would you believe me if I told you none of those picks are still with the organization? Because it's true. The 15th pick, Eric Brandstrom, went to the Ottawa Senators. That was in the Mark Stone deal. Okay, okay, you still have Mark Stone. He's a very important part of your team. Okay, fine. You're allowed to trade highly touted prospects. You just better get something good in return. And they did. Okay, fair. Their sixth overall pick, Cody Glass, was traded for Nolan Patrick in a three-way deal between the Preds, Golden Knights, and Flyers. Patrick had just seven points in 25 games this past season. Okay, you give him a bit of a mulligan because injuries. Injuries are a thing. The Nick Suzuki one? Unforgivable! Nope! Nope, unforgivable. Because was Max Pacioretty good for the Vegas Golden Knights? Yes, he was in fact very good. In 224 games played with the Vegas Golden Knights, and that is a lot of games played, he had 194 points. Dead even, 97 goals, 97 assists. And before you ask, yes, Max Pacioretty had way more points as a Vegas Golden Knight than Nick Suzuki has with the Montreal Canadiens so far. And we'll get to Nick Suzuki. But there's two things that kill this part of the deal. Number one, when these two teams went head to head in the Stanley Cup playoffs in the, was it the Eastern Conference Final? Remember it was that weird one where like, like Tampa played, who did Tampa play? Tampa played the Islanders and both those teams were in the East. So. So I guess that that would have been the Eastern final. But then Montreal, because they were in the Canada division, which is no longer a thing, had to take on Vegas. And Vegas had Patch Ready and Montreal had Suzuki. I remember this now. But what kind of kills this deal is Suzuki's team won! Now I'm not blaming that on Patch Ready because if you watch the Watch a Habs game with Steve Dangle streams that we did that playoffs, holy mackerel, that whole Vegas team was awful. But what makes it worse, Patch Ready's departure. This offseason, the trade was as follows. Max Pacioretty along with 24 year old right-handed defenseman Dylan Coughlin were traded to the Carolina Hurricanes for future considerations. FUTURE CONSIDERATIONS! Oh. Too many people, I'm seeing too many people are saying that Max Pacioretty was traded for nothing. No, he was not. He was traded for less than nothing because Vegas added a sweetener to the deal. Coughlin was a regular for Vegas. He played 59 games on that decor last season. 6'2", 208 pounds, 24 years old, right-handed defenseman. What team can't use that? And all Vegas got in return Future considerations. Future 
considerations. Now, if you've been watching a bunch of these trade tree videos, you'll know that sometimes future considerations turns into something. It can turn into something as big as Robin Regeer. That happened once. But you know what future considerations usually means is nothing! Nothing at all! Maybe a seventh. Maybe, but usually they say conditional seven. So this is probably nothing! And it's unacceptable because you gave up Nick Suzuki! Actually drafted Cody Glass, sixth overall in 2017. They actually drafted Nick Suzuki, 13th overall in 2017. And they actually drafted Eric Brandstrom, 15th overall in 2017. All three of those guys who Vegas got rid of, they weren't giving away the picks. They weren't giving away magic beans. Here's something valuable only if you do your homework. Vegas! did their homework. They selected players who they thought would be good. And they got rid of them for assets that they thought would be good. And Pacioretty was good. And you could stomach that trade under the guise of, yeah, well, at least he was very good for us while he was here, except Nick Suzuki is gonna be a mainstay on the Montreal Canadiens for a very long time. And Vegas got rid of Pacioretty for nothing. Less than nothing. Suzuki to date has been a very good center for the Montreal Canadiens at a young age. You know what's funny? I was about to sit here and be like, oh yeah, Nick Suzuki struggled last season because, you know, the Montreal Canadiens uh, weren't very good and they finished last and they were very heavily affected by COVID and they were calling up guys from the ECHL. It was the best season of his career! He played a healthy, full 82-game season, eclipsed 20 goals for the first time with 21, 40 assists for the first time, and 60 points! He had 61! And that lad is 22! Wait, when's his video coming out? His birthday is August 10th. He's, he's in his early to mid-20s! Is 23 early or mid? I'd say it's probably mid. And there are some 23-year-olds who are watching this right now and you're offended by that, but just remember, nobody likes you. Blink-182 wrote an entire song about how nobody likes you when you're 23. Wrapping up Vegas's end of things because we have some loose ends to tie up with Montreal, we're not even done that trade tree. On Vegas's end of things, their asset management has been astonishingly, astoundingly Poor. Like there have been moves in the NHL in recent memory that you could try to justify because we got a free agent. We went out there and we got a free agent. Like for example, Vegas went out and got Alex Petrangelo on their back end. He's maybe their best player. And they didn't give up any assets, just cap room. They signed him to money. That's, that's a free agent pickup. But up front, you paid a lot of picks and prospects in order to get Mark Stone. Up front, you paid a lot of picks and prospects in order to get Jack Eichel. And those moves sent Vegas over the cap, which meant they had to get rid of Pacioretty for not just nothing, less than nothing, despite the fact that they gave up a second, a roster player, and Nick Suzuki to get him. Atrocious! They lost Pat Reddy and Marc-Andre Fleury for less than nothing. I told you the guy Fleury was traded for earlier in this video. Who was it? Who? You don't remember his name. You don't remember his name. And the irony of it all is Vegas might still end up okay. I think we can all agree that injuries railroaded their season last year. They're probably a playoff team, maybe even a contender. But they did that on the backs of what they did in 2017, how good of a job they did in 2017 of fleecing the entire rest of the league with this enormous cupboard of picks. But those picks are all gone now. They're all gone. For the first few years of Vegas's franchise, they were run like a very well run expansion team. Now that it's 2022, heading into 2023, by the time we award the next Stanley Cup, it's about time Vegas acts like, you know, just a regular NHL team. Now, there is one more branch in this trade tree that we need to go down and it's not gonna take too long. Vegas gave Montreal a second round pick in 2019 and Montreal flipped that to Los Angeles for a third round pick in 2019 and a fifth round pick in 2019. The LA Kings were able to get Samuel Fagamo, who has had pretty good numbers in the American League, but still just in the American League. And the Habs get at least one very interesting prospect, maybe two. With their fifth round pick in 2019, the Montreal Canadiens get a defensive prospect by the name of Jacob Laguerre. Only 21 years old, six foot two, over 200 pounds, oh yeah. Played most of this past season in the ECHL. Oh, 
Yeah. 45 games, 4 goals, 11 assists, 15 points. But again, ridiculously young, you never know. With the third round pick, this is a prospect that I know a lot of Habs fans are very excited about, Matthias Norlander. Another defensive prospect, and one who maybe didn't have the greatest season last year, but I think we can understand why. Because a lot of prospects around Laguerrier and Norlander's age have kind of had a screwed up development since getting drafted. You might remember the phenomenon where the world stopped! It was difficult to find ice, it was difficult to get into games, everything was difficult! Going to the grocery store was difficult! Well last season, which I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe began with an injury, Norlander ended up playing in three leagues on two continents. 22 games with Frölunda in Sweden, six games in the American League with Laval, and six games in the show in the NHL with the Montreal Canadiens. With a season of development with hopefully fewer interruptions than the last, Norlander is a very intriguing prospect for the Habs. So there it is, the Max Pacioretty trade tree that we can now tie in a bow because Max Pacioretty is no longer on the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, if Vegas does somehow get a bunch of future considerations or whatever in this deal, like it actually turns out to be something, um, then maybe we'll make a video about that. I wouldn't hold my breath though. And like I said before, this is only part of a much larger trade tree. If you haven't seen it yet, it's the Craig Rive trade tree right here on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. You should definitely check it out. That is it for this trade tree. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell your friends Name the guy Marc-Andre Fleury was traded for. You still can't do it.